Praise God. Hallelujah. 
God is awesome and we thank God that the name of Jesus is higher than any other name. Amen. I'm the Apostle Oral Hazel. I'm here with you this morning to share the word of God with you this morning. Amen. Just uh, help me share the word on Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, wherever you are. And I know God's going to bless us today for just for being here. And so we pray. Father, this morning, we just thank you as we come this morning uh, just to look into your word and to worship your holy name. We just pray, Father, Lord God, that you would open your word to us this morning. Father, you will bring forth healing, restoration, and deliverance to God's people today. We pray, God, for those who will be watching us. We pray that you will heal those with the COVID virus, the, uh, the corona virus. You will heal those who are going to sickness, disease, and pain in their lives this, this morning. Restore, renew hope within their lives this morning. In the name and the blood of Jesus, we give you glory, we give you praise, and we share this word this morning on God and the pandemic. And so today we look into God's word. I want to begin today as we talk about the topic God and the pandemic. I want us, I want to begin with a open with the verses of Isaac Watts' uh, song from 1674 to 1748. And it says, and when uh, the battle is over, and when this battle is over with the COVID virus, we shall wear a crown. The COVID virus will not be the one wearing the crown. And when the battle is over, we're in a battle. We shall wear a crown. Yes, we shall wear a crown. Yes, we shall wear a crown. Be encouraged. And when this battle is over we shall wear a crown we shall wear a crown yes we shall wear a crown wear a bright and a shining crown and when the battle is over we shall wear a crown in the new jerusalem oh i tell you we're going to wear a crown the corona virus will not be the one wearing the crown but those who have asked Jesus to come into their lives, they will be the one that's wearing the crown. Hallelujah. Will you be one wearing the crown? Today we're talking about God and a pandemic. Just what is a pandemic? A pandemic is... Hallelujah. Let me just change microphones. A pandemic, and it's in my notes on this sermon, a pandemic is the global outbreak of a disease a global outbreak of a disease how can something happen like this globally well it's happening a pandemic is the global outbreak of a disease there are many examples in history the most recent being the covid 19 pandemic declared as such by the world health organization on march 12 2020 with a pandemic. A pandemic is the global outbreak of a, a disease. I believe that God, not only God, you, you are seeing an outbreak of a disease globally, but I believe what in, in God's mind, as, as God's thinking about God and the pandemic, as we think about God, I believe that God wants a pandemic of his glory being outpoured upon the earth. That's, that's something for you to, to write there on Facebook for me or YouTube. God wants an outpouring of a, a pandemic of the glory of God in the earth. Because it says that uh, he, he, the knowledge of the glory of God will be shared throughout uh, the entire world before the glory of God is seen in the world. And so therefore we need the glory of God. We need a pandemic of uh, the Holy Spirit uh, catching a fire. We need a pandemic uh, of the Holy Spirit fire being poured uh, in the earth, uh, being poured in Wuhan and we catch a fire and go to Africa, go to Europe, come to America, come to the Caribbean, and to go to Australia. We are looking at God and the pandemic. God wants a pandemic of his Holy Spirit. God wants a pandemic of reformation, an irreversible reformation, that which we cannot go back to. God is concerned about this earth. God wants a pandemic of Christian love. 
God wants a pandemic of forgiveness forgiving one another God wants a pandemic of Christian love and fellowship God wants us to fellowship with one another and don't think that your church is higher and in a different class than the other church God is looking for a pandemic of men and women coming together after this pandemic is over us to come and make a joyful noise together you see God he has put a pause in the earth he has stopped our human stop clock so that as humans as government as health officials we can look up and turn God word we've been looking at it to different places to find God but God wants you to look up and cry out to him because when we cry out to him he is going to respond to us somebody can just write that in when we cry out to God he is going to respond to us as a people and so therefore what happened because of this virus, COVID virus, with the entire world is on lockdown. Streets are empty in Jamaica. Streets are empty in Trinidad. Streets are empty in India. Streets are empty in the Virgin Islands, in the Caribbean. And so therefore, in California, who can take that this big state, California, in Texas, and lockdown, in New York, and lockdown. And so we are on lockdown so that we can look up and and there's some people who are set in their own sinful ways and they have not paused and they're still cursing God but God sir ma'am God wants you this morning to look up and cry out to God and say God help us even the doctors I heard a doctor this morning saying I mean uh, he's treating folks in the New York area but this virus is not nothing like what you have seen before while you're treating it it's mutating while you're treating the lungs it's attacking another part of the body we have never seen any Thing like this we are putting breathing equipment upon it but we are hurting folks with the breathing equipment and so therefore people are throwing, throwing everything and coming up with all kind of concoctions to throw against this virus but God wants us uh, and to do our veil. Some are being cured and some are dying. But God wants you. You right now, if you're listening to me, you're, you're a part of the few uh, that's listening to us right now. You're part of the few who can make a decision to put your trust, uh, your faith, uh, and your confidence in God. Somebody can write that in for me. This is a good time for you to put your faith, uh, your trust, uh, and your confidence in God. God needs you right now, sir, man. God needs you. God needs those in the high places, in the middle class, those in the, in the ditch. God is requiring you. He wants to get your attention. And with all that's happening in the world, God has not yet gotten some people's attention. But God wants to get your attention. It is time to put your trust in God. Time clock is striking the hour. Jesus will soon descend out of the cloud from heaven to come back for those who have prepared themselves to go with him. Him. Will you, sir? You will, you, madam, prepare yourself to be with God today. Ah, oh, somebody say hallelujah. And so God wants a pandemic like we have never seen of Christian love, revival, fires catching, a pandemic of salvation, people getting saved. And we thank God for the pandemic of revival that's happening on social media. Media. We thank God that they're letting the preachers preach. Hallelujah. And teach the gospel and pray on social media. I tell you, we, we did the social media revival. Got to catch our hearts and spirit. Got to catch our churches. Got to catch our families. Got to catch our men and women. And we got to turn towards God. Oh, somebody that's listening to me say hallelujah. I want to pray in church, even your room your bedroom, your bathroom, your car. I want to pray in church, you pray as I minister God's word. And so, the, the, the word of God is telling us uh, that this virus, uh, this invisible virus, uh, it, uh, you have to look into a microscope to see this invisible invisible virus we cannot see it with our naked eyes and so it is that we also cannot see God with our naked eyes natural eyes and so the scientists and those who want to procure a cure for this disease we've got to look into a microscope and there's some people saying I cannot put my trust in a God that I cannot see but there are so many people who are putting their trust and faith and confidence in a virus that they cannot see. Think about it. You can type something there that people who are rejecting God because they're saying, 
we cannot put our trust, our faith, and our confidence in God because we, we, we can't serve a God that we cannot see. But here is it, that there is one invisible virus that's causing a global pandemic and closing it down. But God wants your eyes to be open. Where do you have to look to see? The invisible God. You gotta look into his word. Get up, download the Bible app upon your cell phone and start reading St. John. Start reading the gospel, Mark and Matthew. I say, God, teach me. And ask a, reach out to a Christian in your community, within your family, and tell them, I need to know God. So here is it, that God is doing a, a switcheroo on the globe, on the world. People are saying, I can't put my trust in God. And we pontificate. And we put our trust in all our degrees. We put our trust in all our money that, that we can't do anything with right now. We put uh, our confidence in our job and our business, uh, the, and the work and the career that we are doing. And that doesn't mean anything right now because everything is on lockdown so that you can look up God and the pandemic. Through the pandemic, God is sending notice to the world. It's time for us to look up to God. Time for us to look up to the God that is invisible to your naked eyes and natural eyes. But when you look into the Bible, when you look into God's word, he becomes visible to your spirit man. He, become, he becomes, he refreshes your soul, your mind and your Im imagery. So look into God's word to, to, to collide with the God who is invisible and put your trust in God. Somebody say hallelujah. Glory be to God. And so the word of God tells us in First Timothy 1.17, he says, Now to the King Eternal, Immortal, Invisible, the King Eternal and Immortal, Invisible, the only God. It says, Be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. First Timothy 1 17. And so, therefore, the invisible um, virus, we can't see the water with our eyes, but we are putting things over our nose, things over our eyes. We are dressing up to protect ourselves from it. We are in our house and self lockdown. We are taking up, moving ourselves socially away from people. And but, but but that's, that's just a virus. But God is saying, uh, I'm not reclusing myself. I'm not on lockdown. Heaven is not on a lockdown. God is calling men and women, boys and girls, to come. He said, come unto me, all who are labored and are heavy laden in sin. He said, come and this morning. Come today. Whatever time you'll be watching this. He said, come and give your life to Christ. Somebody type that in there for me. I say, come and give your life to Christ. This invisible God wants to make himself visible to you by you going into the word of God. Ah, somebody say hallelujah. So God, God, the God we serve, he says in, in Psalm 121, 3 and 5. In Psalm 121, 3 and 5. Psalm 121, 3 and 5. <laughs> hallelujah. In Psalm 121, 3 and 5 says, he will not allow your foot to slip. Your protector, your God, will not slumber. Verse 4 says, Behold, the protector of Israel will not slumber or sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is the shade upon your right hand. Psalm 121, 3 to 5. Your protector, our God, he doesn't sleep, he doesn't slumber. And that because what's happening upon the earth with this COVID-19 virus, the coronavirus, we are on lockdown and many of us are sleeping and resting, giving the world a rest. But let me tell you, the God that we serve and put our trust in, he never sleeps, nor slumbers, he never does, I'm going to take a nap, he's up all the time watching over the earth. So the God we serve, he has not lose interest over the earth. He is watching you, sir. He is watching you, amen. He is watching your family. He is watching our nations. He is watching over our islands. He is watching over the believers. He is watching over our churches. It is watching. He is watching over your community. So therefore, he is not asleep. And so therefore, because he's not asleep, he is concerned about what we are going through too. I believe God is going to bring us out of this. This too will pass. But God just want to get 
your attention, sir, madam, boy, and girl, so you can come to the table and put your trust and your faith in God. Can somebody at home shout and say hallelujah? Now go with the God. So therefore, we, 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 we are living in a time and we are wondering who should we trust? We, we, who should we trust? We are looking for f folks we can trust. Should we trust our governor? Should we um, trust our community representative? Should we trust our mayor? Should we trust our president? Who should we trust? Should we trust the scientists with the vaccine that they are going to create, put into us? And there are so many different uh, hypotheses about uh, what's going to be in that vaccine. Who should we trust but a good a good time for you to put your trust in God is now when you can't find any man to put your trust and your security in it's a good time to put your trust in God who is going to protect me who is going to come up with this concoction I um, mean to invaccinate me so I can have the antidote against this disease I tell you the only one I know right now is to put your trust and your faith in God because he wants to protect you he wants to surround you like a shield. Somebody just type that in there and say, God wants to protect you. He wants you to put your trust in him. He wants you to be secure in him. Whereby you would have, hallelujah, audibly on your, your voice. Absent from the body. <laughs> present with the Lord. Somebody say hallelujah. Absent, present. So therefore, this is a good time to put your faith and trust in God. Can somebody type that in Facebook? This is a time, a good time, sir, woman, man, boy and girl, to put your trust in God. When you put your trust in God, you can find hope. You can find security in God. And God is still declaring in Exodus 15, 26, in Exodus 15, 26, he is declaring, I am the Lord who heals you. Somebody could just type that in for me. I am the Lord that heals you. You can put your name to it. Uh, yes, you right. It is an open season for healing. In Exodus 15, 26 says, in the NIV, he said, if you listen carefully to the Lord your God, and do what is right in his eyes. If you pay attention to his commandments and keep all his, his decrees, he says, I will not bring on you any of these diseases. And so God, he doesn't want to bring upon you, sir, you ma'am, any of these diseases that's on the earth. I, I believe it. You can be disease proof. Just believe what God says in Exodus 15, 26, write it down that you can be disease proof. That God is not going to put any of these diseases that's raging in the world upon you. You say it and say, God, your word says in Exodus 15, 26 that you're not going to put none of these diseases. You're not going to put the COVID-19 upon me, the coronavirus upon me, and no other disease upon me. I am insulated by your word. Uh, somebody say yes. In Exodus 23 and verse 25. Exodus 23 and verse 25 says, And I will take away sickness from the midst of you. God right now is taking away whatever sickness you have. Is that only the coronavirus that's raging? There's some folks with cancer. There's some folks with, with their heart. And they cannot do any surgery on their heart. There's some folks with kidney diseases. And they can't do any um, kidney diseases. There's some folks with liver diseases. And they can't do any liver diseases. There's some folks with circulatory system diseases. There's some folks with eye diseases. And, and there's a surmountable uh, problems that can happen within your body. But here what the word of God says in Exodus 23, 25. He says, I will take away sickness from among you. So you could just shout and say, God, I, I am exhibit one. Take away the sickness that I'm going through and this infirmity away from me. You can shout it in your home, in your bathroom, wherever you are. And say, God, I am, uh, I am in line. I'm on the, uh, at the front of the line for you to take away the sickness, uh, disease, and infirmity away from you. You shout it out. You release it as a prayer. And as we release it, God will take away your sickness, uh, your disease, and your infirmity away from you. 
and Deuteronomy 7 and verse 15 it says and Deuteronomy 7 15 somebody tap them on the wall there for me and the Lord will remove from you all sickness he's going to take away all diseases and now he comes and says I'm going to remove all sicknesses and diseases he will not lay upon you any of the terrible diseases I say that the coronavirus is a terrible disease uh, yeah yeah the Deuteronomy 7 15 is for you he says and the Lord will remove from you all sicknesses if the word of God said all sicknesses is going to be removed I'm going to lay my hands upon my body and say you body respond to God's word God's word says he is going to remove all sicknesses away from me he will not lay upon you any of the terrible diseases and so you could you've got God's word you hallelujah once you've got God's word it is true and it is tried and tested and you say thank God that you you are taking away every disease you are taking away every sickness and you're not going to delay no terrible disease upon me the COVID-19 is a terrible terrible disease as the doctors explain that they're throwing medication at it and it's mutating the same form that was in the room hand is that over in America the same form that that was in America is that down in the islands this thing they say is more mutating they, they, they just don't know what to throw at it and that can uh, dispel fear when you hear a doctor talking like that but we got a God that's greater is than the doctor come on put that one on there type it uh, and remove fear out of you and evict fear out of your mind and your psyche and your mentality we serve a God. He is our keeper. Psalm 121 tells us he neither sleeps nor slumber. Our God, our protector, who protects us, he still stands on the circle of the earth, looking over us, watching over us. So be encouraged that he's taking away sickness, disease, and terrible diseases away from us. In Deuteronomy 32 and verse 39. Somebody write them. So folks can go and look up again. In Deuteronomy Deuteronomy, in Deuteronomy 32 and verse 39, he says, there is no God beside me. Hear what he says, there is no God beside me. There are some people who have other gods, idols of wood, idols of clay, home an idol, car an idol, whatever, your billion dollar home, your billion dollar yacht. But, but he says, there is no other God beside me. He's, hear what he says in Deuteronomy 32, 39. Somebody type it and say, I give life and I heal. And so God wants to give life to you today. And God wants to release his healing to you today. Come on, somebody say, God, release healing and release your life to me today. In Psalm 41 and verse 3, it says, Psalm 41 and verse 3, the Lord will sustain him or I'll join her on his bed, on her bed of illness and restore him from the bed of sickness. And Psalm 41, 3, God is in the restoration business, sir, madam. You may be having, uh, somebody may be sending you this right now and you may have semblances of the COVID virus. God, I prophesy to you that God is gonna raise you up out of that bed of affliction. Why? Because his word says so in Psalm, hallelujah, 41 and verse three. In Psalm 41 and verse four says, oh Lord, be gracious to me and heal me that's a good prayer for anybody to pray and say God be gracious to me and heal me somebody could type that out for me Psalm 41 verse 4 oh Lord be gracious to me and heal me I need your healing in Psalm 103 and verse 3 Psalm 103 and verse 3 says he who forgives all my sins all my iniquities and heals all your diseases God is coming by to heal all your diseases your COVID-19 your corona virus whatever what circulatory systems diseases in your body outside your body you, you name your disease God is coming to heal you of everything this morning in Jeremiah 30 and verse 17. Jeremiah 30 and verse 17. <clears throat> Jeremiah 30 verse 17 says, 
I will restore your health and heal your wounds. Jeremiah 30 verse 17 says, I will. God is saying, this is my will for you. Uh, this is my uh, supernatural will for you. This is my divine will for you. He says, I am coming. My will that is stamped, sealed, and signed in the blood of Jesus. He says, I will restore your health. Your health is diminishing now. When you've got the word of God that says, I will restore your health. And heal whatever is wounding you, declares the Lord, because they call you right now an outcast with this sickness, disease, and infirmity. But but no one cares about you. But he said, I'm coming today to restore you. So therefore, the, the God in Psalm 121 who says he neither sleeps nor slumbers he is coming to you to bring forth healing and restoration in your body so right now we're at this phase where we touch on healing put your hands upon your body and say in the name of Jesus right now I do self-examination and self-healing right now I I release where the preacher can't touch you because of the social isolation you touch yourself you touch what's paining you your head your eye, whatever, or whatever is touching you in the name of Jesus. Right now, as we touch our bodies, right now we release an anointing. We release an anointing to drive out COVID-19, the coronavirus out of our body, the coronavirus out of our homes in the name of the blood of Jesus. Father, right now as we touch our bodies, right now, in the name of Jesus, there's some people on their deathbed, they are lying, just wasting away in cancer, in the name of Jesus, be healed, in the name of Jesus, let life come into you, we commend it, in the name of Jesus, rise up, take up your bed, take up your pillow, dance around your house, run around your house, and shout that you are the healed and the well, in the name of Jesus, those who are on the waiting list to, to, to go to see the doctor because they're saying they can't operate upon you but the pain is in your body the pain is upon your kidney the pain is upon your your heart the pain is also in your circulatory system and digestive systems and you're in a waiting list until this battle is over it's what you were waiting until you're swimming in the name of Jesus be healed of every circulatory system anything any blockage of, of your circulatory system any veins in the name of Jesus God, in the name of Jesus, make brand new veins, brand new vessels in your body. In the name of Jesus, you do what the doctors cannot do right now. Give us brand new organs, brand new heart, brand new lungs. Yes, we, we need a lot of lungs. Give us brand new lungs to breathe in the breath of life again. Give us brand new digestive systems, brand new circulatory systems with folks with um, circulatory systems in their right and left leg. Lord God, start right now, supernaturally creating brand new um, veins and brand new arteries. Hallelujah, so the blood can flow. And where they have uh, the blackness, uh, when they look again, it's going to be clear because the blood is flowing. We command the blood to flow. We command brand new vessels to show up in the name and the blood of Jesus because God declares that he heals you of every disease and he came he's coming this morning to take away every sickness disease and infirmity away from you so therefore you look hallelujah for healing you look hallelujah for peace in your body and where there was pain right now you're gonna be pain free there be gonna be no pain there you're gonna be squeezing and pushing and whatever was shot circuiting in your body I just came back just to stop it and to release healing in your body right now in the midst of the confusion in the world we try to go to confusion of fear and death out of your life this morning go in the name of Jesus and be healed be whole and be well hallelujah ah, somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah in this pandemic let your faith be greater than your crisis and let your faith, sir and madam, be greater than the crisis of this pandemic. Please do not spend all your time listening to the news and watching little clips. Spend some time reading the word to build your faith. Listen to me to build your faith. I'm all over the place. Just put my name in Oral Hazel and I, I can actually rule on Google. You'll see my name come up and you'll see a multiplicity of videos and audios. Hallelujah healing. I, I did it on purpose because we know this time will come when when there will be a dearth of people not going to the house of God and you could put my name in O-R-A-L 
H A Z E L L, right in your Google search, and I'll come up from Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, all over the place. I'm on my on my multiple um, websites. I come up uh, giving you a word that is in season. You find a word that's applicable for you, and you listen to the word. Build your faith up. Do not let uh, this crisis uh, cause you to commit suicide. Cause you to get to get symptoms of the coronavirus when you're in your house, not even touching anybody with it. Uh, we, we curse uh, that spirit of fear right now out of your psyche, your mind, and your mentality, and your imagery in the name of you. I came this morning just for you to evict fear out of you today. Hallelujah. Ah, so I say hallelujah. <sighs> so we are going. So we are putting fear over this crisis. We are putting faith. We are putting faith over fear. We are putting our great fear over this pandemic and over this um, confusion, this corona um, confusion in governments, in the health area, in, in, in the scientific area, in the labs. And then we're not going to let this confusion come into our lives, our spiritual lives, into our families' lives, so there will be bedlam in our land. But we are asking God, we're going to build our faith by hearing the word of God, the faith that you need comes. By reading God's word and meditating God's word, hearing men and women of God that's preaching the truth, you build God's word and let your anchor hold and grip the solid rock. This rock is who? Christ Jesus. And he's the one that needs to get your attention right about now. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. And let your faith be like a trumpet. Let your faith be like a trumpet. Allah blasting over fear. Let your faith be like a trumpet. Let your faith be louder louder than the crisis that's happening in the world. Let your faith be stronger and louder than the pandemic. Let her come on, start getting to, to memorize God's word. Faith, let faith arise within you today. Uh, because uh, there, just, there will be many persons uh, who are listening to the news all day. Please don't do that. <laughs> Please do not do it. Uh, because that can be a way we, we can get it. Uh, even though we, we see on different media, some of the, the people who are giving us the news, they are getting it too. Because of fear. They are fearful. So this thing is a fearful demon. That once you believe in that fear of the COVID virus, uh, boom, the, the, the enemy will just throw it upon you. This demon came from the pit of hell, concocted just to cause, to, to cause pandemic in the world. But God wants to switch a room, uh, it around and use it to, to, to get a pandemic of revival, a pandemic of salvation, a pandemic of the outpouring of the glory of God that we have never seen. God wants to switch a room and turn it around so we can get, uh, hallelujah, a pandemic of, 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 of believers while they're at home forgiving another believer, forgiving their husband, forgiving their wives, calling family members who got everything that dad died and they got the house, the car and everything. Instead of calling them and forgive, I forgive you, take it all. I, 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 I'm going to cancel the court matter. We're not going to court anymore because, listen, as we recognize that that land and that house and the money that ain't going to do us anything in a pandemic when the world is coming crashing that can't help you. you got to help yourself and look to God for yourself. So some of us got to come out of the passing. Some of us have not yet come up the passing. He says, he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And I pray for those who are uh, unholy. He says, be unholy still. But I pray that the people who are unrighteous and unholy, they will get uh, a paradigm shift and hear what God is saying. Time clock is striking the hour. Get a paradigm shift and come into the kingdom of God because hell has, is widening its mouth right now because of so many people are dying in, 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 their, in their sins. But, but right now you're listening to me. You're that on death's door. You're listening to me. Well, right here, left here. It is time for you to give your life to Christ and kneel down with your iPad, your iPhone, touch, you touch on the television you're watching and said, Jesus, come into my heart. Be the Lord and master of my life. I'm running to you. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, glory be to God. And so get in position now to build your faith. This is a good time to build your faith. God declares with men this coronavirus situation is seemingly impossible. But with God, somebody shout, all things are possible. Let me write something. Let's cause a revival today on Facebook. Ah, somebody said, hallelujah, the more you write, the more they spread the word on Facebook. Come on, all things are possible. 
in my home, in my family. Mix it up. All things are possible to him that believes. Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Glory be to God. And hear what the word of God says in Matthew 19, 26. In Matthew 19, 26, in the NIV it says, Jesus looked at them and said, and I believe Jesus is still looking at us and saying, with man this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. I believe that God is still what? Looking with his eyes and saying, you are afraid. You who are frightened with God are finding the cure and the concoction, whatever you could mix up or boil up. He said, with God, with man, this might be seemingly impossible. But with God, it's possible. God it can touch you right now and turn around the impossibility right now to a possibility. I believe it. Somebody say yes. yes. In Matthew 16, 26, in the NLT says, Jesus again looked at them intently. And said, I believe he is looking again intently. Keep your eyes on Jesus. He says, humanly speaking, it is impossible. Humanly speaking, it's impossible. But with God, everything is possible. It's possible. Humanly speaking, with man, it is impossible. Humanly speaking, my God, where are we going to go for security? My God, who are we going to trust? Which doctor are we going to trust? Which medication are we going to trust? What, what, what kind of concoction that we could boil up in a pot that we can drink, that we can trust to give us the insulation and the antidote against this coronavirus? Our God is saying, God, Jesus is saying, come to me. It's possible with my God. Or oh, somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. In Matthew chapter 19 and verse 26 in the NASB version. And looking at them again. Jesus is looking. Jesus said to them, with people, this is impossible. He, he's all inclusive. This is with men, humanly speaking. He said, with people, this is impossible. But with God. All things are possible. You, you put that there, what with God? Somebody said, what with God? All things are what? Ah, somebody said, hallelujah. I like to be on the side of God. Because when I'm on the side of God, all things are what? Possible. So, sir, man or woman, those in the medical profession, those in government, you, 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 you are crying to go to sleep because you can't find a cure. You don't know what else to say in your particular language to say to your people. But he said, here is God is saying, be on the side of God, talk to God, pray to God, and he will put the words into your mouth to say to your people. Because right now he says, all things are possible. I have the words that I'm going to put into your mouth to speak to your nation. I, I can put the, the words, the correct words, so you could speak from your parliament, from your white house, your green house, your red house, wherever you stand to talk to your people and to bring, to bring some kind of semblance of peace and cure to the people's ear and heart. Let the people's heart fail them because of what they're hearing around the world because of this pandemic. God wants a pandemic of men and women coming to him. He loves you, sir. He loves you, ma'am. Young man, young woman, he loves you. you know, some of you are at home doing your lessons on the computer. This has never been like this before. Our world has changed. And there's a dynamic shift in the world because of one silent killer, a COVID virus that we cannot see, a coronavirus that we cannot see. And there's so many people say, I can't put my trust in a God I cannot see. But we have so much faith and trust we have things that we put on, PPP things. We have stuff on our nose and our eyes because we want to be protected from that which is unseen. But God said, you can come open before me today. Come open before me because I'm calling men, women, boy and girl. I'm coming people, calling people in the low place, the middle place and the higher and the higher place. I say, come. I say, come. All things are ready. Come, come, come. I have salvation ready for you. Come, put your trust, your faith and your confidence in me when everything around in the world is faithful. Failing, when when your money is failing when you are coming together socially and you like to go to the clubs and to go to the arena and like to go to your Disney World and go to take a trip on the tourist ship everything is on lockdown the tourist ships were trying to come out again next month and, and the, the, the World Health Organization mm -mm, not so quickly back on lockdown and so therefore everybody want to come out but listen let me tell you something this is a time for you to come out for God be open for God and, and be bare for God because he knows you he knows your sin 
Amen. Say, Jesus, come into my heart. Be the Lord and master of my life today. And he will welcome you into his kingdom. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so therefore it's possible. God wants to turn your sickness into healing and good health. He can do that. It's possible for God to heal you and touch you today. And so let God touch you because it is possible for him to reach out and touch you today. I got some more scriptures to build your faith. Two more. Here what it says in Jeremiah 32, 17. Jeremiah 32, 17 said, Oh God, God, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arm. And it says nothing is too difficult for you. Can you shout at home? Uh, Jeremiah 20, I mean 32, verse 17, and say nothing is too difficult for God to do. Let, right now God is releasing his power, his might, his glory, his healing in virtue, his salvation, power upon you. Right now God is doing everything to open back up your nation, open back up your island, but we got to put our, we got to do a paradigm shift, and we can't, we got to come back to God in drove, and we got to cry for, to God for repentance and salvation. Hallelujah. And so he says, in Jeremiah 32, 17, behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is anything too difficult for me? I believe God is saying, hey world, look at me. There is nothing too difficult for me to do. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. I like to, we, we got to talk like Job. Um, Job, when he was in his pain, when he was in his affliction, Job had a, a teeth a teeth with God. Job had a talk with God. When Job was in his boils and his affliction, he says, I know that you can do all things. He, he, had a, he just had a, a, an imagery about God. Uh, uh, he said, God, I know you can do all things. He had a job, had no script. He had no Bible to go to, but he had to just uh, belch out. He just got to holler out at God in Job 42 and verse 2. Job 42, verse 2. Job lived in a time when there was no Bible, no scripture, no script, no scroll. But he had a, 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 a connection with God, a communication with God. Where he says, God, I know that you can do all things. And if you're a man who never had a Bible, a, a scripture, who had that, that close connection with God, close intimacy with God, can pray and say, God, I know, hallelujah, that you can do all things. Can we put that in there and say, God, I know you can do all things. God, you can eradicate this COVID-19 out of the earth. God, I know you can do all things. You can heal me of this sickness, disease, and infirmity in my body. God, you can, you can do all things. You can heal my marriage. You can turn the hearts of the wife back to the husband, the husband heart back to the wife. And we don't have to, even in this COVID virus, we don't have to pass one another in the corridor and be turning like this and passing one another that. Come on, it's time to hug somebody. Come on, somebody stop in the car again. Hug somebody. I said, sweet, I forgive you. Hallelujah. 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 I guess you can't go on the road to see your sweetheart, and she can't go on the road to see her sweetheart Dita. So let's get it right in the house. The preacher said, get it right in the house. Come on, get the demon out. Remember the time we used to romance. Remember the time when you love one another. Come on, start loving. Love your husband, love your wife. Love your children, love your grandchildren. Come on, let's get right in the house of God. Let us close up death and suicide and, and folks are killing and strangling one another in the house. Acting like pack rats. Let's put our trust and faith and confidence in God right up in the house. Somebody say hallelujah. So I like to, to Job talk. I know that you can do all things. God, let's lift our hands up and say, God, I know that you can do what? All things. I'm not going to put my God in a box. I'm not going to look up and curse my God. Uh, no matter what happened, Job said, though he slay me, yet will I praise him. My body is in sores and everything else. Because what a heaven is better than the transition we are going to end the earth. These are the last of the last days. We are preaching all about Job. But Job said, though he slay me, yet will I put my trust in you. Somebody said, that's a mix of theology. But you better get in touch with that mix of theology. God, do you slay me? Yet will I praise you? Because earth is not it. Earth, earth, light is coming under dark, coming under dim. We are living, we have a generation that's living in the last of the last days. So I can write it there. We are the generation that's living in the last of the last days. So we got to handle this world, I mean, lightly and put uh, our grip 
grip upon God and to and, 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 and grip the solid rock. And this rock is Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Say hallelujah at home. Somebody say hallelujah. So this situation we are going through is just temporary. Because we know that God can do what? All things. This is the setback that we are going through right now. Don't have a job. Nothing happening for us. We got to go and shop with whatever little money we got. This is just a, a, a temporary setback. God is moving to heal and to restore our life from every setback. Every delay. Anything that wants to come into our life, God is coming. Job 42. To meditate upon this this week. I know that you can do all things. Take a shift and say, God, I know that you can do all things. Let's shut that in our homes. Let your neighbor hear you. Let your husband hear you. I said, what you're saying in the bathroom? What you're saying in the bedroom? Just say, I know that my God can do all things. One more time, show and say, I know that my God that I put my face and trust in can do all things. And this world has a lot more to go. This is just uh, the birth pains. And if we can't handle the birth pains, I, it has a lot of stuff. It got rumors of wars, earthquakes in diverse places. It got um, tsunami that will crash a nation and bust them to smithereen and wipe out thousands and millions of people. We have snowstorms that's going to happen in places that we have never seen snowstorms happening. Blizzards we have never seen happening. And, and, and they don't know what kind of what's, what's happening because of what's happening in the earth. You understand me? And all that is found, and I'm coming back to preach about that another time, in Matthew 24. It talks about uh, all the plagues and pestilence that's coming upon the earth in the last of the last days. What we are going through now with the COVID virus is that God coming back for his earth. God is just giving us a time and a space and stopping our stop clock and for us to pause and, and to breathe in his life and his everlasting life. This ain't nothing yet. And what is written? In Revelation 20, 20, 21, 24, and all that, and in Matthew chapter 24, this is a piece of cupcake. Ah, somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. So God, uh, God got you covered. Come on, somebody say God got you covered. Somebody type it on Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn. Somebody say God got me covered. God has not abandoned me. Hallelujah. And I'm, a, and I'm extrite, I, and my, I am extricating fear. If you can spell that word, just you put it. God is ejecting. God is throwing out fear out of me. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Because his blood covers me. Whatever is coming has to contend with the blood of Jesus. The blood has the ability to protect me. Somebody got to show it. Let's have some church in our home, uh, and on, on our sheet, in our pillow, wherever. Come on, somebody said the blood of Jesus uh, has the ability and the DNA, the life of God in it uh, to protect me in the 2020, means of the 2020 COVID virus, in this 21st century. Here what Exodus 12, 13 says, Exodus 12 and verse 13 says, And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the house where you are, a token. And when I see the blood, yes, God is saying, when I see the blood, when I sent out the, the, the dead angel, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. And so there was a, a dead plague going through to kill all the firstborn. And then God gave Moses the instruction, tell the Israelites uh, to put, uh, hallelujah, the blood of the lamb upon, uh, hallelujah, their doorposts, uh, signifying that the blood of Jesus, uh, hallelujah, would be shed uh, to protect us in our home, uh, protect us on our journey through life. Uh, oh, somebody say hallelujah. Yeah. But in, our, in, in Exodus 12, 13, it says that uh, if, the, if, the, if, if, if the, the blood of goats and cows can protect under the old covenant, how much more can the blood of Jesus protect us today under the new covenant? Somebody say hallelujah. I like that the Hebrew rendition. The Hebrew rendition in English we say that when I see the blood, I will pass over you. But when you dig a little deeper, it was when I send the dead angel.
angel, uh, the, the best I could have translated in the English back then, in the King James Version is, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Let me thank God for that translation. But we're going to dig a little further. We're in the Hebrew context. In the Hebrew context, it says that when I see the blood, the angel will jump over you. Or will, will, will it say jump over you? But I'm going to try and will fly over your house. So let me tell you something about this COVID virus. When when uh, the COVID virus see the blood, the impenetrable blood of Jesus over you from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, uh, the COVID virus uh, is going to fly over you, jump over your house, uh, jump over your husband and your wife, your children, your grandchildren, everything that's up in your house, uh, and jump over your island. We all shout the blood of Jesus, uh, and we, 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 we can start contending with the blood of Jesus against uh, that COVID virus, and it will jump over you. Somebody say hallelujah, because he's going to see the blood of Jesus. So the blood of Jesus is still efficacious. The blood of Jesus is still flowing to protect us from every sickness, disease, and infirmity, and any death that wants to come by us, we apply the blood. Come on, right now, let's say, I apply the blood of Jesus on the corner of my head to the sole of my feet. I apply the blood of my husband. I apply the blood over by call your son's name your daughter's name your grandchildren name apply the blood of jesus they may be living in new york and send the blood of jesus and apply the blood of jesus they may be living in africa in europe in england in california in, in Los Angeles, wherever they are, in, in LA, wherever they are, in, in um, all the places where they have the outbreak of this COVID virus, you send the blood of Jesus and it will protect them. Uh, somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. So the blood of Jesus protects me. Somebody shout and say the blood of Jesus protects me. In Leviticus chapter 14, 51 to 53, the blood has the ability to cleanse our dwelling place. In Leviticus 14, 51 to 53 says, it says, and he shall take the seed of wood and the hyssop, cleanse me with hyssop. And it says, and the scarlet represents the blood of Jesus and the living bird and dip them in the blood of a slain bird and the running water and sprinkle the house seven times seven is the number of god's perfection to sprinkle them we got to follow god's order that's under the old covenant verse 52 and he's and he shall cleanse the house with the blood of the bird and with the running water and with the living bird and with the seed of wood and with the hyssop and with the, the scarlet verse 53 but he shall let go the living bird out of the city into the open fields and make an atonement for the house and it shall be clean and thus we see that the blood of jesus also has the ability to clean your house just go around your house if the blood of a bird sprinkled with a hyssop tree can cleanse in the old testament how much more the blood of jesus can clean up your house so if corrupt COVID virus is in your house or any semblance you can right now say in the name of jesus i apply the blood of jesus in my house to contend against this COVID demon that wants to come in and paralyze my house and you you apply the blood of jesus upon your pillow upon your bed sheet in your bathroom in your kitchen upon every spoon and upon every knife and fork you get crazy applying the blood upon your television upon your iPhone, iPad, upon your, the, the, with your entrance into your house, upon every window, you say the blood, I apply the blood of Jesus, because if the blood of a bird, following the instructions on the air, all covenant, can cause a house to be cleansed and bring healing in, oh, will we apply the blood of Jesus, that oh, the blood of Jesus has the DNA in, 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 in it to bring forth healing, restoration, and deliverance in our homes, and to cleanse our home from sin, sickness, disease, and infirmity. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Ah, somebody say yes. yes. 
And so pray that God will send the west wind in your nation. We are sending the blood. We are exalting Jesus higher. And now we find out in Exodus chapter uh, 10 and verse 19. We're going we're gonna to pray skillfully and ask God to send the west wind. It says the Lord responded by shifting the wind. Come on. So I said the Lord what? responded by shifting the wind and the strong west wind blew the locusts into the Red Sea. Not a single locust remained in all the land of Egypt. Exodus 10 and verse 19 in the NLT version. Here is it uh, that God responded to the, to, to the Egyptians and the children of Israel crying out uh, up in Egypt. And in the Egyptians were no easy folks. The Egyptians were a rebellious people. The re Egyptians they never knew God. God displayed his signs and wonders and miracles to the Egyptians. We only knew that God can do signs and wonders when Moses showed up with his staff and stick and said, oh, okay. And then when, when he said, let the people go, his musicians came on the scene, famous musicians came on the scene and said, hey, be that so. And they threw down their sticks and their rods and all their rods became serpent. <laughs> <laughs> and then but Moses said, God, what might I do? <laughs> Moses threw down his rat too. His one rat turned into hallelujah, a serpent. But what happened is that his serpent gobbled up all the unruly and ungodly serpents that came from the, at the cauldrons of the demonic hell. And that's how we saw that, that uh, in Egypt, uh, them boys weren't easy. I mean, Moses was up against some guys who were deep and steep in the counters of hell. Them guys went out to hell to learn them stuff. Them guys had books how to turn a rod into a snake. They weren't easy. We got to just say, mm -hmm, bring. <laughs> oh my God. And snake showed up. Some Christians would run. But this is a time for the, the, the power of God that's inside of us and all the anointing we say we got and all the supernatural power we have to show up on the scene right now. This ain't no time to run in our bedroom. This is a time to call your brother and sister. Tell them about the things of God. Somebody say hallelujah. You will be socially distant, but do not be socially distant from spreading the kingdom of God or the word of God. Just don't get there in a cocoon and just get there and have a drunken moment and all you're seeing is oh, no, no, you're get it. no, 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 no. As a child of God, you get busy. Come on. You start a conference line. Get all your, your the, the number of your of your family members. Tell them I'll call you Monday night. Everybody get on the call. It's a free thing. Just go up online. Just put free conference line. Create one for yourself. And start let them talk. Oh, I'm afraid and so on. And then you 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 be the last one to wrap up. Wrap up with the world. Wrap up with the word. And lead them to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. This is what we call open season. Come on, Christians, don't be a lockdown. Just don't be hiding in the sheets. Just don't just walk in around your house. No oh, wonder, wonder, wonder. Come on. This is a good time to evangelize. This is a good time to evangelize your community. This is a good time to open a conference line with all of your co-workers and let them talk and about their fear. And then you release the faith-filled words to get them into the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Ah, somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. And so it says, in the midst of Egypt, in an occultic place. Some people say the world is bankrupt. But look at this. The God who sent the plague. Whether God sent this coronavirus, COVID-19, God's heart is so tender and so sweet and so secure. Uh, there are some people who want to break up the world and mash up the world one shot. But here we look at this. And people who went down to the cauldrons of hell just went deep down to learn about all this stuff from darkness. When God is displaying his sun, his moon, his star, and they weren't seeking God. So what was happening in nature, they went deep down to learn about the occult. And they were good at it. And you don't mess with them. And Pharaoh had, uh, had I mean, his government surrounded with these occultic guys. And so if you're coming for him, you're going to pass these guys. And these guys knew when you're coming for him, they were deep. And so he, it, 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 was, it was Pharaoh and his occult um, group you had to come through to penetrate Egypt leadership. That's how they did it back then. But, but in the midst, when God wanted to get their attention, 
He sent the, the locusts on the land and ate up every blessed thing. Everybody began to wail and cry. And God just said, God's heart so tender. He said, I sent it and I can also create a situation where I can remove it. And so I want us, uh, if God can do it in the word of God, create a situation to send it and to remove it. Well, let's ask God, God to remove the plague in Egypt with a shifting west wind. Let the wind shift on the earth and start blowing. Start blowing out the coronavirus off the earth. God is able to do it. Tell him, ask God to do it. I say, God, blow, blow it, blow out, send a, a, a wind that could shift and blow in my mind out a mentality that I'm not worshiping you. I don't want to worship you. He can send the wind to blow out disastrous thinking and hell thinking out of your mind. God can send the wind to blow out confusion out of your family. God can send a, a wind to blow, uh, to blow confusion out of your church, to blow confusion out of your nation, to, 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 to blow in a brand new economy, and you can send uh, the, the east wind to blow in prosperity, and to send in the north wind to bring the glory of God and the ever present of God in your land. Uh, somebody say hallelujah. And God do not want to heal nations and islands so we could go back to the same old, same old. God wants us all to come together to be. God created you uh, in the islands, in nations, for us to worship him. You were created to worship and to praise him. He created you so you can look to him for your help, your healing, your sustenance. He is your, he is your maker and not you yourself with all the degrees you have with all the things that you think you know and, and you, whatever you think you think you know God is bigger and better than you because he is your maker he is the one who created you and he's been on the scene long before you came hallelujah. on the scene hallelujah. Ah, somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah and so the Lord the Lord responded by shifting the wind Oh, so I wish I had time to talk about that. But you can revelate about that in Exodus 10, 19. God wants to come upon nations to shift the winds in nations. Shift the winds in government. Instead of, instead of us being secular, we ask for the east wind to come. We ask for the north wind that flows and blow in from the throne of God to blow in an unprecedented revival in your land. An unprecedented glory in your land. Unprecedented glory and revival and refreshing from the winds from the north because he, that's where he's his station in the north. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Send it. Somebody say send it. Send it. Send it. Send it. God wants to send it. Send it. Come on. Somebody say send a wind. A wind. A wind. A wind. To blow out disastrous situations out of our thinking, our minds, and our psyche. Send the wind. Pray for strength to turn the battle. Here is it. We're going to pray. Hello, intelligently. Send the west wind. And then we're going to pray for strength to turn the battle to the gate. In Isaiah chapter 28 and verse 6. Isaiah 28 and verse 6. Uh, in the NIV. Isaiah. Isaiah. Chapter 28 and verse 6. He says, we're going to pray for strength to turn the battle. He says, he will be a spirit of justice. God is a God of justice to the one who sits in judgment. He says, a source of strength to those who turn back the battle at the gate. And so therefore, all of us who are fighting, all of us who are praying, all of us who are sending out the word, God is our source of strength. God be the source of our strength for the medical first line respondents. God be the source of strength of those who are working 24 hour shift and, and some uh, doctors can use of reach home as yet they're sleeping in the hospital, nurses RN, be their source of strength for them they are turning the battle against the gate, against this COVID virus and so therefore we got to pray for strength he will see that justice rules and that his people are able to defend their city and so we are going 
going to defend our nations when we stand to pray we say God strengthen us we feel the spirit of fear paralyzing that we could touch it but God you're going to strengthen the frontline soldiers who are preaching the word of God who are, the, who are sending out prayers who are sending out worship who are sending out the word of God so that the enemy cannot get everyone in the world that's why we're here preaching and streaming the word of God and so Father we thank you a spirit that released a spirit of justice in the world a strength to those who, who repel the onslaught at the gate those who are fighting in prayer those who, who are wrestling like Jacob in prayer to find a solution those who are working physically Lord God right now strengthen them come on somebody say Lord God what strengthen them infuse them with strength they are turning the battle to the gate of Satan against this COVID virus and God said I'm going to strengthen you and I'm going to bring justice in the earth somebody said justice it's time for justice and equity in the world somebody say hallelujah and so those who are struggling with physical breath because of the coronavirus, hear what the word of God says. He has fresh breath for you. In Genesis 2 and verse 7, Genesis 2, 7 says, Then the Lord God took some soil from the ground and formed a man out of it. Man, you're from the soil of the earth. You're just dirt, dirt men and women. He breathed life-giving breath into his nostrils and the man became a living soul soul and so therefore you are formed so a formed woman out of dust and so therefore we came out of dust in death we return to dust we are just pontificating dust we are just a uh, dust dressed up looking good this Easter oh but but let me tell you something you are a billionaire dust you, you are a, 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 a man who rules your particular community dust you are a governor dust you are a lieutenant governor dust you are a president dust you are a queen, dust. You are a parliamentarian, you are dust. You are a senator, you are dust. You are a congressman, you are a dust. You are a ditch digger, you are a dust. You are a middle class worker, you are just dust. And then what happened? God breathed breath into you. And so God is still breathing breath into you. Those who are struggling with the COVID virus, those who do they have equipment upon them, breathing equipment upon them to assist them in breathing. Father, we, right now you go and superimpose and overrule all the equipment and breathe the breath of life into them. Come on, somebody write that on the wall. Say, God, right now breathe the breath of life. We, we, we release the breath of life to people who are struggling right now. To breathe we, we, we release that breath of life also by say hallelujah in uh, in, Ex in Ezekiel 37 and verse 5 uh, uh, when when God encountered the dry bones it says in Ezekiel 37 5 he says this is what the Lord says to these bones you may think you are dry your parched Lord I'm gonna die he says I will cause breath to enter you God said that only I, I'm gonna cause you to live again I'm gonna cause breath to enter into you and you will live you will not die so you will not die because what of whatever sickness disease you have somebody can type that and say you will not die but you will live because God said this is what I'm going to do to you right now I'm gonna breathe the breath of God another kind of breath is going to come into your life another breath is going to come in from the supernatural realm to, to superimpose upon the natural oxygen and carbon monoxide just inhale where you are and inhale the breath of life one more time inhale and as you inhale, get an imagery that God is breathing the breath of life in your direction. Because he said, this is what I will cause to happen to you and your sick bed. That you're going to breathe in. And as you breathe through the fresh God kind of air, the God, the, the, the air, which is the glorified air, which is a whole other level kind of air. This is the glory of God that has into it the, the, the DNA to resurrect dead lives. That's what God wants to do with you right now. Somebody at home shout and say, right now. Ah, somebody said hallelujah. hallelujah. So therefore we are praying. 
that God will release uh, the breath of God upon you. Somebody said, do it, do it, do it. Uh, those who are going through struggles, uh, those who cannot breathe themselves, uh, those that have uh, all the breathing equipment to hook up to, Lord God, breathe your fresh your life of glory, the, 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 the atmosphere of heaven. Right now, Father, I release the atmosphere of heaven. Right now, I release the atmosphere of glory. Hallelujah, the atmosphere of another atmosphere into our atmosphere on earth. Uh, and as we breathe in, we breathe in glory. Glory speaker of uh, another kind of life it goes speaks of eternity that's where we came from our spirit man came from it let your spirit man inhale eternity right now and receive in your lifeless body the god kind of help right now can somebody say hallelujah 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 glory be to god and so hallelujah hear what job 22 21 says he says agree with god expect good to come out of this i'm going to expect that when all this confusion is over when all this pandemic is over oh, i'm believing for god kind of pandemic to show up i believe in all this confusion in government all this uh, confusion in in the health and the medical uh, arena all this confusion in our community in our homes i expect that god's going to come through the silver line for us uh, I believe and I'm preaching that there is a uh, I believe that there is light and glory at the end of this tunnel this ain't it yet this ain't the last bell being rung upon the earth this earth got a long more to go God is just giving this earth a little pause and so that the men and women in high and middle and low places can look up to him and start crying out to God and there's some people who and they're not crying out to God but they're still cursing God and everything that has to do with God. But God waited upon you, sir, you, madam, to repent and look up to God and say, God, I give you my all. Hear what uh, the word of God says in Job. It says, agree with God, that God will turn this around. Agree with God, that God going to body slam out of this earth. Sickness, disease, and infirmity. Agree with God, that God will send a west wind. Agree with God, that God is going to come in with his blood. Hallelujah, into your home, into your life, to cover you, to protect you. Awesome, I say hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, I agree with God that God, as you listen to me, God is going to intensify your faith. And God going to give you great faith as you listen to the men and women of God that's preaching the truth. And I agree with God that God wants you to come into the kingdom of God. And God wants you, sir, madam, boy, and girl, to give your life to Christ. I agree with God. And be at peace. God wants you to be at peace. That's Job 21. 20, 22 verse 21. Job 22 verse 21 in the ESV version. Agree with God right now and be at peace with God. He says, thereby good will come to you. Good will come to you after all this uh, and who I should trust. Who shall I look to for security? Should I look for my, to the government? Should I look to the medical professional? Should I look to my governor, my senator? Should I look to my, my own personal doctor? Should I look to the herbalist? Who should I look to? He says, he says, agree with God. Agree with God right now. And just be at peace. Because you can't do anything but be at peace. Just be at peace. Be at peace. Be at peace. Because Jesus he is the king of peace. So once you put your trust in the king of peace, you got to be at peace. And agree with God. Be at peace. He said, thereby, in the midst of all this global pandemic, global fear, global terror, global silent, I'm a killer that we cannot see with the naked eye. Globally coming around the world, and we don't know who, how we can inhale it, capture it. We just heard about some people working in, in some meat markets in the states and have to close down some of those meat processing places because they don't know whether it's a cow is giving it to them or people giving it to them. Uh, it, 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 it can be crazy. <clears throat> but here what the word of God says. I agree with God. And be at peace, sir, madam, boy and girl. Thereby good will come to you. Job 20 to 21. 
I expect good to come out of this. Come on, write this and say, I expect good to come out of this. Whilst I am in, in, in self-lockdown, self, whatever you call it, imprisonment in my self-cocoon, when I'm in self-separation, I expect God to give me some good dreams and visions. I expect to come out of this I'm better physically, spiritually, and naturally. I expect to, to get some values of virtue, some morality, some spirit, spirituality in my life. I expect to love my neighbor as I love myself. I expect to do good, and I, I expect to put my trust my faith and confidence in God who can protect me I expect uh, and a good to come out of this uh, for Global Life Church. Call the name of your church. I expect good to come out of this uh, because when we come back together, we're going to have, uh, uh, when the summer can come back together, we're going to have this uh, fervency for us to see our brother, our sister. Whether you're seeing Pastor Lewis, I got to see my other brothers and sisters. I just can't wait. And we're going to have that ever present fellowship, fervency, a time of jubilant worship and praise. We're going to have a breakout. Uh, hallelujah with God. Somebody say, Yes. yes, all the global life churches say yes. You say yes for your church too. Hallelujah. Expect God to come out of this for your community. Expect good to come out of this for your community. Maybe in our community, we got folks who's killing one another, hurting one another. Expect good to come out of it. Pray. You're in your community now. Pray for your community. Pray for salvation. Pray for peace. Pray for harmony in your community. Expect good to come out of this for your nation. Pray for nations that they become a pandemic of revival. Unprecedented. We have never seen in the 1904, 1905, 1906 revival. Pray in the Hebrides revival. Pray and in the pouring at Canada um, Airport Church. You pray. Uh, in Pennsylvania, you pray uh, for, for a great outpouring of the Holy Spirit that you've never seen in your community, your village, your community, your island and nation, and your state. Say, so God, send an outpouring of your power in our nation. So we're expecting good to come out of this. Expect good to come for the islands of the Caribbean, the islands in the Pacific, or the islands off of the different nations of Africa, islands off of America, all off of Florida and all the places where they have Louisiana and Texas. And we pray, hallelujah, that there's going to be a revival in the islands of the sea. And we expect good will come out of it. Somebody said, I expect good to what? Come out of it. Expect good to come to out uh, for your personal life. Uh, expect good to come uh, out for your family life. Families coming back together in love. Husband loving their wives. Wife loving their husband. Our uh, um, uh, wives begin to cook for their husbands again. And the husband begin to bake uh, and, and start washing the clothes again uh, and cleaning the house. Uh, I tell you, our well, husband will look good. I start cutting the grass and in the clubs uh, and uh, drinking with the buddies on the road uh, and saying long to come home. But at home right now. Uh, but uh, because we're on a lockdown. And so the grass can be cut, and folks must start uh, taking up chores and continue doing those chores. Uh, somebody say yes. Hallelujah. I hope they'll love me after this. <laughs> somebody say yes. Yes, yes. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I'm expecting. Come on, somebody at home, write it there. And my Facebook wallet. I expect good to come out of this. After this bedlam. After all this confusion, whether you should let, let my people go, or people should stay at home in self-quarantine, uh, uh, distancing from the, one another, Lord, when is it going to be over? We just don't know. But we know good will come out of this. The earth has been here before with a lot of um, uh, the Spanish plague, the Black plague, Black plague, all kind of stuff happening in the earth before. And we overcame them through the word of God and also through prayer and intercession. And men during that particular century looking to God for help. May we look to God for help. Somebody say hallelujah. So we know that good is going to come out of it. I even went and I researched and I have a hyperlink in my notes online. I went, good will come out of it for a, a, a lot of folks in a lot of nations. In America, they, they passed in Congress 2.2 trillion of a Corona virus aid relief and economic security. A key act, 2.2 trillion, unprecedented. And all Americans, we're going to get our $1,200 check once you're a taxpayer 
those who are exempt, they have a place for them to sign up. And in America, we're going to get a $1,200 US check. But there's some other countries that were a little bit more generous than America. And we pray that the, the Americans become a little more generous. In the United, United Kingdom, the good came for them. They, they are paying their workers. Their government is paying their workers. In the United Kingdom, 80% of their workers' salary, 80% in Denmark, they are paying 75% percent of the worker's salary in South Korea 70 percent of their worker's salary they are paying because of this COVID virus pandemic in the Netherlands they are paying 90 percent of their worker's salary in Canada that for, for a couple months they are paying them two thousand dollars per month oh our next door neighbor Paying them two thousand away. I want more money. I want some more money up in here, America. In Australia, they are paying one thousand per month. So America is giving us a one-time check of one thousand two hundred, and I, I I pray that they would mirror what some other um, industrial nations are doing in America. And so, therefore, God is the good will come out of it. God is laying on the the, the, the playing field. There were some people who, who who needed the money, and so therefore, God, good is going to come out of it just for you can you say come on come on smile and say good it's going to come out of it in the midst of the pestilence and everything god has given you some pocket change in every nation of the world the government who never looked after you who never cared for you they're going to send you money in the mail or tell you where to go to line up for it so that's where it is for good that's that's where i got that scripture from when digging in job 22 21 thereby good will come to you good will come in america good will come in the united kingdom good will come to you in everybody to the in denmark south korea netherlands good will come to you in canada good will come, come to you in australia and america ah oh, come on somebody say thank god thank god for the good money that's coming to me oh, one more time say good thank god, thank god for the good money that's coming to me and so here what God say, I'm human, your human origin. God reminds us in Job 4 and verse 19, how much more those who dwell in houses of clay. So ma'am, boy, young girl, you dwell in a house of clay whose foundations are in the dust. Your foundation in the dust. And so therefore you can be crushed anytime like a moth. Job 4 and 19. This is a man who been the test of time. So in the midst of this pestilence, Job came again to tell us how much more those who dwell in the house of clay, whose foundations are in the dust. Sir, educated sir, educated man, woman, sinful man, sinful, ungodly people, your foundation is in dust. And just like how you went uh, and, uh, with a, a, new, a multiplicity, a funeral throughout your lifetime to bury your friends your loved ones so it is your time will come you're going to return to the dust so while you are a talking listening dust you better put your trust in god right now when you're on the earth this is what you call your preparation station to put your to prepare yourself for hell or to prepare yourself from heaven you be the judge of that and you make your own decision Right now as I come to a, 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 an end to a call to Christ, it says, uh, what must I do to be saved? This is what you must do to be saved. You have listened to my sermon on God and the pandemic. And God is saying, I super rule over this pandemic. I have the blood prevails over it. In, in Psalm 121, he says, I am neither sleeping nor slumbering. I'm looking, I'm seeing what's happening in the world. I, I see the defection that's happening in the mankind, the heart of mankind. Where mankind now, they become inventors of evil things, inventors of sin. Men would stay up all night and they would worship the enemy in their clubs from, the, from, 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 from 1 o'clock way down to 5 o'clock. And they control the night. And then right now, all down in Las Vegas and the clubs in the Caribbean, they're closed. And, Carnival is closed down and we hear that they want to do virtual carnival, you see, because what happened? Those who are righteous, let them be what? Righteous still. And those who are unholy and unrighteous, they're going to continue to do what they do best. They're going to party and wine and send their diatribe throughout um, cyberspace. 
But that we are praying that it would collide with us, uh, speaking the word of God so they can know that God wants to get their attention. And they're going to come out of their posse, the, the, the posse and the gang of the ungodly. Whichever gang and posse you've been running with, it's time for you to, to, to let go and come over with God. God has needs of you. So as we do a call to Christ, listen very well. It says, what must I do to be saved? This is what you must do to be saved. In Acts 16, 30, 31, somebody could write it down for me. Acts 16, 30, 31 says, sirs, what must I do to be saved? That question should be on your lip if you're ungodly. So they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. You and your entire house. So you're going to believe in Jesus. You believe in this. Uh, we celebrate his death uh, and his burial and resurrection around Easter time. But here comes, he's saying, what must you do to be saved? Jesus, uh, he died on the cross. He shed his precious life blood just for you. Jesus even went to hell so that you don't have to go to hell. He's a hell heart. He's a hell in a place where the worms are dying not and the fire is not quenched. And no man, no woman, boy or girl should go there. So therefore, what must you do to be saved? You must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. In Acts chapter 4 and verse 12 says, Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby you must be saved, so and men. So you got to let go of your idols. You got to let go of idols of wood, clay, and stone. You got to let go idols of things, natural things in the world. Let go of idols, your money, your manufacturing plant, whatever you have in the bank. You got to let go and hold on to those things lightly. But God wants your one and only soul so that you can be, hallowed, you're transported when you ask him to come into your life from heaven uh, from from earth to heaven in revelation uh, chapter 3 and verse 20 he says, Behold, I stand at your door and knock. He is knocking at your door. If anyone hears the voice of God and opens the door, he says, I will come into him and eat with him. And you will have and, and he with me. He wants to have intimacy with you. He wants to have fellowship with you. In Revelation 3:20, what you're what you're hearing upon your heart, the palpitating while the preacher is preaching, is that God is saying, Knock, 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 open and ask me to come in. Just say, Jesus, come in. He will come in. And my last scripture, as I close, it says in, in Romans 10, 9 and 10, Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if you confess with your mouth, God has given you a mouth to talk to him. And God can talk. How can God create humans who can see and, and a tongue can talk? God can, the same thing you can do, hallelujah, God can do too. He can hear you. He can talk. He can listen to you. So God wants to listen to you. In Romans 10, 9 and 10, it says that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. He says, you shall be saved. What do you believe? Let go of the belief in the devil and in Satan. Believe in God. For it is written, for it is, for it is with your heart that you believe and, and is justified saved and it is with your mouth that you confess and you are saved so madam so therefore right now say i will lead you in this prayer as i round up on god and this pandemic god is so much uh, want you to really taste of the miracle of miracle healing is good being healed of the covid virus is good but this god wants to be be healed of that which is it is of that which is impacting and afflicting your soul. That's what God wants you to heal of. So right now, according to Romans 10, 9 and 10, just bow your hearts where you are. Hold on to your iPhone, hold on to your iPad, touch your television set, wherever means you are listening to me, and say, Dear Lord Jesus, come into my life today. Jesus, be the Lord and Master of my life. Say, 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 Jesus, right now, I evict demons and devils out of my life. And today I welcome the peace of Jesus Christ into my life. I welcome Jesus in my life. And right now I accept Jesus as the Lord and Master of my life. Jesus, I thank you for saving my soul. Jesus, I thank you for making me whole. Thank you for giving me this great salvation that is so rich and yet so free. God bless you. 
We love you and thank you for coming by on Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, uh, wherever, wherever social media platform that you're listening this on. All I ask you to do is to assist me with this word, with God and the pandemic. A lot of people want to know what, what, what is God saying? And so that's why I release it, God and the pandemic. God wants us to be healed, to be whole. And he's going after us to heal and hold. So help me start some watch parties. Get out your ribs and your chicken legs and your whatever. And your fries. And help me share the word of God on Facebook. And put it on your wall. Send it. Start a group and send it to your loved ones and your friends and your close associates. So they could hear and listen. And so we will have this conversation about God and the pandemic going on for some time. And so that we can have, we can dispel fear and doubt out of the hearts of our friends and family, co-workers, and our Facebook friends all over the world. And let them know they can put their trust and faith and their confidence in God. When they're looking at who to trust, who to believe, they can find a place of peace and, and security. God bless you. So at this time, we're going to uh, change and we're going to go into taking those who are here. You can go on back and, and get some the element. And we can take the, um, the communion together and so if you're in your house you can get um, a cracker get a piece of bread uh, get something get orange juice lime juice get water God turn water into wine because often as we do this God is releasing healing in your house healing in your home get every, let everybody participate even the young ones tell them come come as a family come 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 call them out their bedroom Tell them, come, listen, this preacher called them. Tell them, this preacher is calling us to do what you call a communion time. A, a, a family coming along the family altar to have what you call the Lord's Supper. When we have the Lord's Supper, it speaks of a spirit of unity. It speaks of uh, healing and cleansing. And so also we are invoking the blood of Jesus into our personal life, inside us, outside of us. And anything that's broken in our homes, what we can see physically, and also upon our bodies, God's going to come to mend them. Let's take it together. So, Father, right now we lift up the bread, or whatever we have, as a token of the Lord's Supper. And so, Father, said, often as we eat this bread, we do, Lord, we do show forth the Lord's death until he comes. And so, Father, whatever is broken in our nations, whatever is broken in our islands, our community, whatever is broken in our health system, Whatever is broken because of our sin in the earth, because of our defection, going away from God. And we love a sin more than we love God. And now God, your place, the entire world and pause for us to really do some introspection, to start turning and looking to the true and living God. The one and only God for us. Stop having our conscience and our mind saved like a hot iron. And God is calling you to your repentance. So as we take the, 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 the covenant bread together and we eat it together, we pray that whatever is broken in our community, island, nation, in our medical system, we pray that God, you will come down supernaturally and begin to mend it up for us. We ask that of you in Jesus' name. Let's all eat it together as throughout the globe and eat it together as one family. Hallelujah. And so, Father, we thank you. We lift the cup with your grape juice, your wine, your water, the lemon juice, orange juice, whatever we have at home. You turn water into wine. So, we never know. You turn water into wine, so we never know religious. It's not a religious time. No time to look to God for help. So, Father, this which we're going to drink now typifies your shed blood and Calvary. And so, Father, as we drink it, you're going to remove the coronavirus out of our bodies, out of our home. You're going to insulate us, our lungs, our breathing uh, areas with the blood of Jesus. And you're going to be there as a catalyst to, to insulate us from getting this coronavirus and this COVID-19 in our lives, in our family, in our island and nation. So we're drinking it, discerning it. Though because when we drink it, it, there is healing in the blood. There is cleansing in the blood. So we drink it looking for healing. And that's what we need right now in the world. 
Globally, in wherever space we are, we are drinking this covenant, much supper that you tell us as often as we drink it. That we remember your shed blood and Calvary was shed for our cleansing, shed for our salvation, shed for our healing. In Jesus' name, she said, so that you can push us out from the slavery of sin. So we put your trust in you and your covenant now. In Jesus' name, we all drink together as one family, drinking together in harmony for our healing. Hallelujah. Thank you. And we thank God. We thank God. Hallelujah. We just worship you. Just lift your hands up in your home. And so, Father, we just worship you. And we thank you. We worship you. And we thank you for your blood. We thank you. We worship you. And we thank you for your blood. Hallelujah. We worship you. And we thank you for your blood. That was shed on Calvary Street. In Jesus' name. So we've come to the end of our live streaming broadcast. But do not let this be the end. Continue to share with your friends. Share it with your loved ones. And so, we also are going to invite you to celebrate with us or to, to, to give into our ministry. And so you can give by going to 340-774-5400. We're going to be here for the next 30 minutes. And you can call our church number. You can also give securely with your credit card. We have a credit card system. We put it into. We don't keep your numbers around. Drop it around. So if you like to contribute to our Global Life Church ministry and, our, and the outreach that we are doing globally, you can call us uh, now at 340-774-5400. You can give us 5, 10, 15, 20. You can also go to our, our to PayPal and uh, also give into our PayPal. You can go to www.orwellhazelministry.org. Um, you can go there and look for our PayPal, and you can also give via PayPal. You can also send in a gift to us to send it to Global Life Church, um, P.O. Box 304283. That's 32. That's 304283. St. Thomas, USVI 00803. You can also come by the church during Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Fridays from 12 to 5. And you can also um, bring your gifts. Uh, Global Life House can bring their tithe, whatever offering that gift, so that the church uh, can continue to function as we go along. We thank God for all those who've been blessing us um, via uh, PayPal, those who've been sending in their glove gift as we labor and to send the word of God out. So God bless you, and we love you as we sign out. We love you, and we're going to always be praying for you. If you have any concerns, you can also uh, put it in our box on the Facebook. Don't put it on the Facebook wall. We want to leave that for other things, ministry ideas. But put it in our box. Put it in my box or well, Hazel. And you can just put it right there. We will see it uh, in any one of our streaming areas on Facebook. And we will see it. And we will also connect with you. So God bless you. We love you. And we're going to see you again next week when we're going to come back with another word, amen, from God just for you. God bless you. Bye-bye.